Hello, my name's Sam and I'm going to demonstrate how to set up the battery backup that you will have received from Kirkhouse. The inverter battery backup that you will receive from Kirkhouse looks like this arrangement. You'll notice that on this side you have two batteries. Car lorry batteries of the highest power are better, 12 volt batteries these need to be purchased locally. You then have the inverter battery backup and the various wires that are leading from it, the positive, the negative with the monitoring wires and further over you see the power in and power out leads. The thing to check at this point is that the red key is out and loose and this way it's safer to make all the connections. In setting up the inverter battery backup, the first stage is to connect the linking cable between the two batteries. This takes a 10 mil spanner, but it will vary sometimes depending on what your battery has as a connector. And you connect the positive to the negative. And there we have the two batteries connected together, minus to plus, negative to positive. The next stage is to connect the red cable with the sensor connector, and these both go onto the positive terminal of the battery. Very similar to what we did with the other cable. But do remember there are two going on. So the two are connected, but make sure that with the nut and bolt that it makes a good tight fitting. The next stage is to connect the black and sensory wires. Again, there are two to connect to the terminal. And again, making sure that you have a good tight connection. Now that the batteries are connected to the inverter backup, you will notice that on the digital display, the batteries actually give a current. At this moment, we're still not plugged into the mains and the unit is not turned on, the key is out. So this digital display is showing you the power that is held within the batteries. With the batteries connected, we now want to give power to the inverter. So we plug the inverter into a main supply and briefly the lights come on. But at the moment, if you notice, with the switch, it is in the off position. So if we just turn it to on, the machine is working out what's happening. The electric is going into the machine, but with the key still turned off, the electric is going nowhere. And as you see here, it reverts to the charge mode. This charge mode is not charging the batteries because at the moment with this key, this charger is disconnected from the batteries. The next stage is to actually put the key in and allow the electricity to reach the batteries. So the key goes in and turns clockwise and there we have the electric flowing through into the batteries. This can be seen by the monitor is now increased from 24 and above showing the electricity going into the batteries. So this is how it should be set up and it is ready to then connect to a piece of equipment. So from the inverter, you have your power lead and this power lead is what will go into a piece of equipment. And at the moment we're demonstrating with this thermal cycler. So the plug fits directly into the thermocycler. 
and there is the switch to turn it on. So I will turn on the thermocycler. And there it is, powering up. A thermocycler has quite a long period of time that it needs to complete its experiment, and this whole setup is to enable that to take place if your electricity fails or indeed goes beneath the correct wattage. In that way, the batteries will cut in and protect the experiment until it is finished. You may have been supplied with a row of plugs from Kirkhouse Trust for your laboratory bench top. Now these can be powered through the equipment by putting the plug, the male plug into the female cattle plug and therefore when you turn on your plugs are live. This enables or acts like a very large surge protector and will protect all the equipment that Kirkhouse supplies to you. More or less everything can be put into these plugs, but the one thing that must never be used is an autoclave, because the autoclave will use more electric than can be supplied if you have more than one object plugged in. But the other things can be plugged into this. Important also, if you notice on the back, is an earth cable. And that will need to be uh, attached to your nearest earth point. And in that way, it allows the casing never to give you a shock. If you were to have a power outage or interruption, what would happen? Well, let's demonstrate that by me taking the mains electricity away from the setup. We're no longer plugged in, but instantly the batteries took over the powering of the thermocycler and the experiment, not interrupting it at all. When we look at the setup, we'll notice that from the digital display, you're now starting to draw electricity from the batteries. And the inverter shows a green light demonstrating that you're working from the inverter rather than the mains. So when the power returns, what do you need to do? Nothing. Let's demonstrate this. We'll put the power cable back in. The power returns and the experiment continues to run, but we'll notice on the inverter that once the inverter senses the electricity is the right level and is constant, the inverter will turn off and go to charger mode. This can take about 30 seconds. And now we're back to where we started. The inverter is being powered by the mains, but the batteries are now being recharged for the next time there is an outage and your experiment in the thermal cycler is still running uninterrupted. This whole arrangement for ease of demonstration has been on a table, but if you look at the equipment, it is screwed to a backboard. This backboard has four screw holes and therefore it can be mounted on the wall, making it easier because it's out of the way. Likewise, the batteries can be tucked into a cupboard under the tabletop. It helps keep it all neat and tidy. If you were going to turn off the equipment, the way in which you would do it would be to turn the inverter to the middle position, which is off, from on to off. You would likewise, before you touched the batteries, make sure that you turn the key to the upright position and take it out. Then you know for certainty that the electricity from the mains will no longer reach the batteries. If you're indeed using a plug, rather than it being wired in, you can remove the plug and then you're totally isolated from the mains. The inverter is turned off, the switch is taken out, and therefore you are able to take the batteries off or retighten them without fear of getting a shock.